Hey everybody, welcome to Papa Bear Gaming, where we hate the summer since this is the part of the year where we're not sleeping for six months at a time, and sometimes just being awake is way too much work. Today I want to talk about a game I picked up a few weeks ago called Beethoven. No, not the game about the famous German composer, but about a dog that shares his name. And at this point I'm not even sure if they're trying to degrade the composer or pay homage to him. Can I take a second to talk about the spelling and pronunciation of Beethoven? All my life, I always thought Beethoven was spelled with one E. But then I picked up a copy of this game and I noticed that there's two E's. I initially thought, oh, they probably did this to distinguish themselves from the German composer. But to my surprise, Beethoven is spelled with two E's. I immediately want to pronounce this beat hoven as in beat and hoven. But I'm using all the fibers of my being to prevent mispronouncing the name. Beethoven, <coughs> Beethoven is about a St. Bernard that lost his four pups, and to avoid getting puppy protective services called on him, we need to find his pups, or else he'll be in the doghouse forever, with his lovely wife Missy. Wait, can dogs get married? I don't think so. Between the manual, the back cover of the box, essentially the same paragraph is written three times with many of the details being the same. Now I'm paraphrasing here, but the back of the box basically states that Beethoven is a family of his own, he has his paws full, he's losing track of the pups in the living room, and then he has to travel all around town, four areas to be exact, to rescue the pups before his sweetheart finds out. Page 4 of the manual states that Beethoven has his paws full, but this time the puppies are named, Tchaikovsky, Dolly, Chubby, and Moe. You will have to help Beethoven navigate four parts of town, find the missing pups before his sweetheart Missy finds out. Page 5 of the manual. Now, if my math is correct, page 5 is literally one page after page 4. Yes, it's definitely correct. I just verified. So page 4 states that the St. Bernard puppies have been separated and lost, and Beethoven must find them around town in four separate locations. This time, the manual tells you that not only do you have to find them, but you also have to bring the pups back home. So now that we've established that Beethoven's four puppies have gone missing, I think we can talk about the gameplay. There are, not quite sure about this, but I think one, two, three, four stages? Better check the back of the box, and maybe even the manual too. Ah oh, yeah, there it is. Four stages. We have the suburbs, where the whole family lives, the park, which looks like a disaster waiting to happen with all the unwatched park grills just spewing fire as tall as the grills themselves. The kennel, which I thought was a dog food factory, with all the dog food just laying around and the shipping containers. Also, how many kennels do you know that make their own dog food? And on top of that, how many kennels do you know that have conveyor belts inside of them? I, I, I bet you zero, zero kennels have conveyor belts inside of them. The last level is the wilderness level, which is the hardest level, and for some reason gives me vibes of the Lion King. I don't know if it's because of the mountain lion that you encounter in the beginning, maybe he kind of reminds me of Simba, or maybe it's just because of the color scheme. Each one of the four zones is split into two stages. The first stage you have to go and find the missing puppy, before child services does. I mean, before Missy, your sweetheart, finds out. The second stage of every zone is bringing the puppy back to Missy. Call me naive, but doesn't this make little sense? It seems like Missy already knows that the puppies are missing. She seems to appear at the end of every zone, so she must know. It's just weird that it's up to Beethoven to find the pups while she just sits there, waiting on his return. This part of the gameplay, though, is odd, but it's pretty innovative, at least for the time. I can't recall how many games do the same thing. It's almost like this is the first escort mission, but the puppy can't get hurt, so it's not so bad. All you have to do here is pick up the puppy when it can't jump over a certain gap, or it can't climb up, let's say, a crate, or a fence, a wall, and that's it. You just have to clear the enemies and make sure you don't forget about your puppy. There are some cheap moments in the game, though such as when they have two crates side by side in a platforming area and as you approach the second crate in a row it starts to fall because there's nothing under it. 
once you play through the level a few times, you start to memorize where these things are. But I think the biggest gripe with the game that I have are the apples, which are fairly visible. Bright red balls on a green background. But later on, when you get to the wilderness stage, they turn into boulders. And they're super hard to spot. All you get is a brown rock-looking formation, just like any other. And right before you approach the boulder, you'll get this small, small warning pebble falling right before the big rock falls. That's it. I felt like those couple of things were cheap. And then, you know, the wilderness section kind of comes with its own problems. It's, it's fairly hard. And, you know, if you beat it, good on you. Um, the HUD has health markers, a life marker, and a time countdown. To be honest with you, I don't think the time works the way it's supposed to. I've watched that thing go down and it's painfully slow. I've played this game for quite some time now and honestly it doesn't even matter if the timer is running or not. I've never had a look at it besides that one time when I was confused wondering what it did. Each second feels more like three and while playing the game you forget it's even there. When playing the game I thought this was a feat counter which told me how much distance is left till the end of the stage. The game also goes on to call your lives which are indicated by the Beethoven's face and a number next to it as turns left and the health indicator is referred to as strength. Come to think of it the game was made for kids so they were probably trying to avoid terms like lives and death. Little did the developers know that 40 year old something bears would still be playing this game like 30 years later. They can't stop us even if they tried. The control scheme is fairly easy and I feel like they put some thought into the mechanics of what a St. Bernard the Says of Beethoven would do. Not only that, the developers of this game actually watched the movie and a lot of the little tropes from the movie they put into the game. They have a chargeable bark which sends a sound wave coming out of Beethoven farther when it is charged. This is especially handy when trying to clear enemies that are far away or still off screen. There's a shake off mechanic which does nothing when you start the game. But if Beethoven gets wet by a water fountain or a dripping pipe, he can clear all the enemies off the screen just by shaking off his body. That's the move that I do when I get tired of people being around me. I cover myself in river water and shake it off next to the person I don't want to be around anymore. Gets him every time. The B button does a standard jump. Once you get farther into the game, you will have to use some of the more advanced mechanics, like charging your bark while you're still on the ground, jumping, and then releasing your bark so it hits an enemy that's on a platform just slightly above your reach. Pressing the X button allows you to pick up items, such as bones, drumsticks, stakes, and then in the second part of every stage, your missing puppy. If you use the function to pick up a bone, it will give you one extra paw of health. If you use the function to pick up a drumstick, it will refill your health bar to maximum capacity. Now if you eat a steak, that will give you an extra life or turn. I don't know about you guys, but if I eat a steak, I could use a good 20 to 30 minute nap. I definitely don't want to go harder at whatever task I'm doing. All in all, the game was average. It's easy enough and entertaining enough for the time, and my little ones enjoyed it for a solid few hours, trying to beat the levels and exchanging the controllers between every life, or should I say every turn. The gameplay isn't too extraordinary, but Beethoven has a number of features and attacks to keep the game interesting. The difficulty ramps up pretty quickly, and although the game is just a mere eight levels with repeating character sprites and backgrounds, it's not that bad of an entry, especially for a licensed title. I myself, as a young cub, would find some enjoyment out of this game if my copy of Mortal Kombat was broken. <laughs> That's it for tonight, folks. Enjoy your lives, go outside, spend some time with your little ones, and hug your significant other. You just never know when life will throw you some rotten salmon, and next thing you know, you're trapped in a zoo riding a bicycle for other people's amusement. If you like the content, subscribe, like, comment, share your love for salmon in the comments below. And most importantly, stay free and happy, because if you're not working towards your happiness, you're working for somebody else's happiness. Look like it's time to hang my hat on this video. Have a good night, y'all.